Hello, I'm Kylie Brockway. And I'm TJ Dysart. Thanks for joining us for our very first journal magazine show, Life in Color. This is a collaboration between Marquette Journal and Marquette University Television with a twist on campus happenings. To start things off, the LGBTQ plus community has several resources on campus, but support falls short in other areas. Timothy Lateau connects with community members. I think a lot of people are intimidated because it is a religious university, so I think there might be stuff in people's minds about maybe there'll be bias against you because you are a part of the community. Um, but I've not felt that at all. Actually, this is the first university that's had the most resources for me. The law school has the Out and the Allies Legal Society, an organization to support LGBTQ plus law students. Students at any level can turn to the LGBTQ plus resource center. And that's something that not all schools have. It's kind of very intimidating um, to be at like a religious Catholic institution um, like Marquette. Um, but I think definitely the people and the professors have been really, really supportive of everything that an LGBTQ student could face here or just like in like the academia world in general. And for the faculty side of academia, there's an LGBTQ plus employee resource group. So we are perhaps a little bit unique compared to some of the other re, uh, employee resource groups on campus where we have the population that does identify and the mixture of others that are allies. One thing Marquette has that many other schools, especially other Jesuit schools, don't have is this level of institutional support that we have. Um, we have a center. We have someone whose full-time job is to support these students. And so that's massive institutional support, financial otherwise. Support, but more to be done. And so there are ways that I think we need to have more of that training, more of that awareness of what the experiences are like for the entire community. There are plenty of individual students who've had tough, tough times here. Um, and so I would love to see more of the culture um, support those folks. Um, there's a sort of a low level of outness on campus. Um, and I would love to see that kind of be warmer. A warmer culture so that everyone's true colors can blossom and so that no one has to be left outside in the cold. A warmer culture so that everyone's true colors can blossom and so that no one has to be left outside in the cold. I'm Timothy Lateau, Marquette Wire News. It's great to see everyone from students to staff in that story. But now it's time for me to ask you a question in this quick trivia break. Which languages does Marquette not offer? American Sign Language, Japanese, Arabic, or Italian? What do you think, Kylie? I've never taken a foreign language class here. I'm in French right now, so I don't know any of the other ones. The correct answer is Japanese. Of course, I can't find a professor who teaches the language from the land of the rising sun, but here are some German and Italian studies professors who share their experiences with me. Language, culture, and gratitude. These are the three pillars that Marquette University foreign language courses aim to instill in their students. There's lots of reasons why it's important to learn a language. I mean, one of, cognitively, it's incredibly helpful. Um, you get an enhanced memory. You also um, have better critical and analytical skills. And, and these are things that like, they've done um, studies on. Behind me stands La Lumiere Language Hall, home of the Department of Foreign Language Studies. Several classes are taught here daily, ranging from Chinese to Arabic and German. Many of the professors telling me that while they emphasize the learning of foreign language, they emphasize culture just as much. You learn a different way of thinking because of course the way we approach life in each culture, the way we approach life, the values, for instance, in Italian culture, the, one of the most important values is personal relationship. And just like Italian culture, personal relationships are key in the classroom as well. Um, I have found that college students tend to be okay with getting back to kindergarten, if I may say so. High schoolers want to distance, dis, distance themselves from their childhood a bit, but it seems like college students really enjoy the games and the pantomime and the uh, charades and the gestures. I'm TJ Dysart, Marquette Wire News. The Marquette Journal has many elements, from investigative reporting to unique, uniquely creative designs but it also tells stories through photographs. Let's go behind the scenes for our Fashion 5 photo shoot. 
Hi, my name is Lily Werner and I am the Executive Design Assistant with the Marquette Wire. This is me speaking. <laughs> my name is Kimberly Cook. I am the Managing Editor of the Marquette Journal, which comes out November 17th. And the reason we're here, yay. <laughs> so initially, um, Kim and I were talking about what we wanted to do for the fashion shoe. And obviously the theme for the journal is life and color. The original idea came from our design chief, RJ, who he wanted to do a cool thing with like neon and... Something I thought of that really inspired me was those big neon lights that you see. Um, so I really wanted to harness that in my designs and kind of have it jump off the page. We kind of got it set up and we got to the point where like, okay, yeah, we really want to focus on like when it comes to the models, their like personal expression and how they dress themselves and how they see themselves. Um, so in, in going along with that, like we wanted them to be able to express themselves fully through their wardrobe. So without giving too much away, during the shoot we did um, a studio session for the fashion shoot and then we also went outside to shoot the cover. From the moment I walked in, I saw the bright lights in the studio and the photographers were playing around with motion and lights. I knew I wanted to focus on accessories on certain pages and definitely a group shot to showcase that you can live life in color in many different ways. Um, and I think that we definitely showed that successfully. And then my favorite part about the fashion shoe, I think was using the smoke bombs outside because I've never done that before, um, photo wise or just for fun. But I think my favorite photo that I took was of um, one of our models, his name is Ryan. And I kind of did like a side profile of him. And so because we had the lights um, on his side, like having him side lit, there was like a really cool shadow of his earring on his face. Um, and I don't know, it's just like really dramatic and I really like how it turned out a lot. I'm beyond prideful of this, this fashion shoot and this fashion spread that people are gonna see in the journal because it is quite honestly one of my favorite things that I've ever been a part of creating um, and ever like really, really just like, I, I just love it. I love it so much. Life in color to me, I feel like personally, it just makes me think about how we all come from different backgrounds and different interests and different families and stuff like that and how we are all different and like color just makes me think of like the many colors in the rainbow and I don't know just how we're all different and then I guess on the wire we can come together and work on one product together the journal. Um, every journal we have a different theme and this one especially was really fun to work with. I got to reflect on how I see life in color and when designing the fashion spread specifically, I saw how everyone lives their lives differently, colorfully, and I definitely think I do that in my everyday life, but design helps me do that in a academic place. You better pick up the journal, get it on newsstands. We all worked really, really hard. Um, go look at the Flash 5 because that's where the photo desk really shines. Um, we each have a full page photo. And I would really just love to thank everyone that was a part of this, whether it was, you know, as a model, as a photographer, as an editor. It's literally a journal, a diary of all of these stories is something that's very special to me and that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. Man, certainly looking forward to picking up that journal and taking a look at that spread. But coming up after the break, all about the most popular bird on campus. And later, our very own Kimberly Cook will discuss her experience as managing editor of the journal. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Sometimes, the things we do or say can make others feel hurt, excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? 
friends. Welcome back to Life in Color. I'm Kylie Brockway. And I'm TJ Dysart. Next, this campus icon soars high and spreads love from the bottom of his heart. Kristen Parisi catches up with Wisconsin Avenue's version of Big Bird. When going to Marquette sporting events, men are keeping their focus on the game. But in the corner of your eye, a familiar face rises from down below. A creature only Marquette fans would know and grow to love. That is Iggy the Eagle. Although only getting his name in 2020, Iggy has already made a name for himself as the beloved mascot on Marquette's campus. You know, at the beginning of the year, he was just kind of the, like we all thought of him as just the mascot and thought it was cool. And by the end of the basketball season last year, we were all taking pictures with him and um, he was leading the student section chants and everything. So it was really cool. Just like looking at Marquette's basketball uh, record from last year, you can see that they did a lot better at home when they had the student section. And I think Iggy plays a huge role in that. Whether at a basketball game, a volleyball game, or down at Valley Fields, Iggy keeps both the fans and athletes engaged. I think he's great. Uh, I think that goes into a little bit about, uh, we've been talking about internationals. I think mascots here is, <laughs> is such a big thing. Like, it's so American to me. Uh, having mascots, uh, but I, I like it. I think it's important for a team. Like it makes fans come together. It makes them join in with the mascot, be more engaged at sports events. So I think Iggy is really important to to this school and uh, to all the sports teams. I'd say he helps keep people entertained. And sometimes in the games, though, he'll walk around with all the students and just like entertain them, take photos with them, just do do what Iggy does, throw shirts. I think he definitely helps keep the crowd motivated, and I think that does benefit the players too. And if they're lucky, sometimes the kids get a lucky chance to try to get one past Marquette's best goalkeeper. No matter the occasion, no matter the holiday, Iggy will always go hard for the fans. I, I just thought he was a really cool mascot. He was really entertaining. I felt like he did a really good job going up to everybody. Because my first time seeing him was at, it was just like a girls volleyball game. And Iggy was going around taking pictures with all the new students. And I just thought he made everybody just like more enthusiastic. No matter if you're part of the Marquette's Kids Club or just a regular fan, you will always have a special place in Iggy's heart. And at the end of the day, Marquette fans love their sports, but they might love Iggy even more. For the Marquette Journal, I'm Kristen Parisi. Marquette Wire Sports. That's it on the bird. Now we'll focus on human emotions. Narrative 4 is a national organization that helps students tell stories and better empathize with others' experiences. There's a newly founded chapter at Marquette. Sit back and feel the vibes. So the mission of Narrative 4 is to cultivate radical empathy and embolden and equip young people to change their lives, communities, and their worlds. Empathy, we talk about like building connections with others, putting, putting ourselves in other people's shoes, deep listening, um, and like not necessarily responding to understand, but to sort of let people's stories sit with us and we, we can hold each other's stories for a brief period of time. We're trying to incite empathy with stories. So the story exchange, um, you come together in a group, and it's usually like 10 to like 16 people, is like the ideal number of groups. And you get paired up with someone, and you have prompts for stories to tell. So a lot of them will be like, tell a story about a first, or um, I don't know, about an experience in nature, things like that. Or it'll be very specific and targeted, like, um, who's a person who's inspired you, um, stuff like that. Um, 
and you get partnered up and you tell your story to your partner and then they tell their story to you and then you come back to the big group and the main part of it is that you tell your partner's story from the first person. So if Alex was my partner, I would say, I would start the story exchange and I would say, hi, my name is Alex and this is my story. And then I go on and I tell her whole story as if it were mine. Yeah. yeah, so we're not an official student org, so we are directly connected with the global chapter and the regional office. So that's how we get funding, that's how we talk to people, that's how we register the exchanges, is through them instead of through Marquette. We'll have a story exchange in a classroom with an instructor who's maybe wanting to fit the story exchange into their curriculum or wanting to fit the story exchange into their syllabus. So we will work with them to come up with prompts that are directly related to the curriculum that they're talking about, the readings that they're doing with their students, um, so that the students, the story exchange becomes an extension of their classroom. Everyone who does a story exchange is like, I, should, I want to do this in my, like this class, or like I want to get more information about this and like do it somewhere else, get trained. Story exchanges would be one tool to to helping students feel, you know, like a sense of community um, on campus. Not an end-all, be-all solution at, at, by any means, but one tool to sort of bridge those gaps that are happening um, where students don't feel included. Because we want this to be a group organization that involves everybody on campus um, and doesn't like exclude anyone, I guess, because we're about inclusion of all, everyone. Um. Coming up, we'll hear from Managing Editor of the Journal. Stay with us after this break. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Welcome back to Life in Color. I'm Kylie Brockwood. And I'm TJ Dysart. Marquette University Television General Manager Sarah Richardson joins us now from the newsroom. She's with Managing Editor of the Marquette Journal, Kim Cook, to hear more about the creation of the magazine. Thanks, TJ and Kylie, and thank you, Kim, for joining yeah, us for on the Journal Magazine me. show this for this year. The semester is our very first one. Yeah. So as the Managing Editor of the mm -hmm. Journal, Obviously, we have a big magazine coming up. Yeah. What is the idea behind this big theme of life in color? Yeah, so when I thought about life in color, I really just wanted to incorporate uh, like the kaleidoscope of human existence, as I call it. So that's the bright days, the dark days, and everything in between. And it just it came together so well, and I'm really excited for everyone to see it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And so, obviously, like this magazine has been in the works for a while now. Yeah. What are some of the preparations that were taken in order for this to come out? Yeah, so I actually started planning this in July of all things, of all times. So it's been a long time coming. Um, and then when the semester started, we had our series of check-ins. And then, of course, we had the fashion shoot um, in early October and then production date at the end of October. And here we are, November 11th, and the journal comes out next Thursday, which is insane to think about. But I'm really happy that, you know, the whole team effort um, that we, we've gotten to this point, and it's going to be super cool. And what is your favorite story? Like, let's talk about a story oh. from the journal. Let's talk about it. What's your favorite story that you think went in the journal? For my, this year? oh my, this is hard. You can't, you can't ask a mother to pick her favorite <laughs> child. Um, oh my goodness. I think my favorite story that went into the journal um, was probably uh, there's a story called Inked, and it's about different uh, tattoos of that people have on campus and the stories behind those. Um, so that was that one's definitely one of my favorites. Oh, very nice. Yeah. So I'll definitely have to look out for that in the journal next week. Yes, very please exciting. do. And so, you know, we talk about this process, we talk about all the stories that go into it. What is yeah. your favorite part of creating this whole magazine? 
Honestly, for me, I think it's a lot of just the collaborative effort because, you know, I get to talk and collaborate with so many people that I normally wouldn't on a daily basis. Um, so just getting to talk with them, hear their ideas about the story, um, and really see it come, like, come together from the story idea on the page to a fully designed spread with words and pictures. Um, so I, it's really cool just to see the whole collaborative effort of it all. That's awesome. And so we talk about this theme, you know, living life in color. Yeah. Um, what does that mean to you? to live life in color? To me, I think living life in color means taking the good with the bad and everything in between. Because, you know, there are going to be days where, you know, there's a whole bunch of bright moments, um, but then, you know, there's also those days where there's a little bit more gray. Um, so just finding a way to mush, mush, um, get those all together and carry on throughout all of that. I think um, it's really important to do that and continue to grow through those experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, I did that story with you earlier mm -hmm. this week on the fashion shoot, but you talked a lot about breaking the mold. Yeah. Um, if you want to talk a little bit more about, like, what it means to break the mold and how it ties in with the theme for this journal. Yeah, I mean, in terms of life and color, I think breaking the mold is, you know, we, sometimes I think in today's society we get caught up in, like, just, you know, living our lives and going through the day-to-day -day motions. Um, but I, I think breaking the mold in that sense means um, living every day to the fullest and taking those even those bad days in stride like I said before um, you know we all become we're all based off of our experiences on people created and molded from our experiences um, so I think just you know being really present in those experiences and uh, ex acknowledging them um, I think is something that's really important and goes to breaking that mold that's really awesome yeah well you know that is all the time we have for now I'll send it over back over to TJ and Kylie in the studio Thanks so much, Sarah. Big shout out to Kim for all the hard work that she continues to put in for the journal. Coming up, a paint game journal themed. Stay with us after the break. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight. Both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. When not in your hand trying to text somebody back. Because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Every day, millions of people are connecting. Father. Cosplayer. Mentor. Actor. It's time we take a step forward, come together, and discover how accepting our differences can make, make us stronger. Welcome back to Life in Color, MUTV's journal magazine show. I'm Patrick Curran, here with TJ Dysart, Kylie Brockway, Andrew Hubbock, and Jack Albright. Okay guys, today we will be playing splatter paint. The rules are pretty simple. You have three minutes to create your best work of art, and we don't have the best artists here today, but we will do our best to fulfill our childhood dreams. So right. let's go, ready? You have three minutes. This suit is going to have to go to the dry cleaners after this. <laughs> what do I do? I just. Oh, my. It's got, it's got to get some pink here. I think the strategy is to mix the paint colors together. Whoa, that bounced. That oh. Was, oh, my God. I'm sorry, TJ. Nope, this I'm is... good. For now. Oh, my gosh. I just missed the whole board. You know, <laughs> you know, these days, I bet something like this could sell for half a million dollars. I mean, Jackson I Pollock was art. successful. I went to the museum over uh, fall break in Boston, and there was just a white canvas with a red dot on it, and that was selling for quite a hefty penny. I'd pay a lot of money for what you got over there, TJ. That's, That's a sad shit. time to forget how to make colors. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is a little blotchy, so I'm gonna. Oh, I got some in my eyebrow. I'm gonna try and no, like, some give it some wrist, Jack. Right? Some oh. wrist. Oh, dang, you guys are doing I a lot better I might be winning me. the mess contest, though. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm really happy with that. You know, I don't have a lot on, on my canvas right now. <laughs> this is me Two minutes. Two minutes. This is me living my life. You see, you got to change brushes as well. That's really oh, how you I get the quality. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Like, we got a bunch over here. Let's take advantage of that them. That didn't change anything. I love how <laughs> accurately this plate <laughs> represents my life. <laughs> like, 
Jack, I'm loving yours. Thank you. I just got some on Andrews. And I have it all over myself. Oh, I, I have it on my pants. I, I have it on my shirt, my you pants. Do I get the camera from here? I think if you tried. <laughs> Don't leak it yet. Okay. I need to leave space for a signature. If Ooh, I oh, die one true. day, true. this needs to go somewhere. This is my signature. Haggerty Art Museum, see if they'll take it. Yeah, probably not. Right on the <laughs> <laughs> Jack, you just, I'm just, he just, <laughs> just made blue. I, blue, one a, minute. One minute, oh boy. Of a color. I feel like I'm on Iron Chef right now, where I'm like <laughs> racing against the time. I'm just putting as much paint on there and hoping that's like good. Yeah, just leave room for the signature. I'm gonna take this home to my family. And I hope they hang it up, but they'll probably just throw it away. But you know. Yeah, mom I used said to, I was uh, always good at art. My mom never said that. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'm out of paint. It's a good thing this paint is washable because, oh boy. They just said that. Twenty seconds. <laughs> Only twenty seconds, Patrick. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Brushes down. Brushes down. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh wow. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. let's let's flip these around so we can see them. You guys just painted with you know the colors of the journal. This is a very special thing that we're doing here today. Okay, wow. Very yeah. different. Um, different approaches here. So it seems like TJ went for, the, you know, the more solid. Uh, <laughs> just kind of, you know, maybe not as much splatter. But, uh, yeah, wow, a lot of blue. Okay. <laughs> Kylie, I'm really, I'm really liking the, uh, you like know, a, mix of colors yeah. here. It's like a Over rainbow. Over here, yeah. yeah. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. um, Andrew. Definitely messy. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, making it. Had a breakdown. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, and Jack over here, we're having, yeah, you, you didn't get as much of the, you know, the green, the no. light green, <laughs> <laughs> but there's, 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 there's some pink there. I like that. Okay, so I think, I think I'm gonna give TJ's a seven out of 10. Seven out I'll of 10. I'll take it. Seven. I'll take it. Um, Kylie, I'm gonna say Kylie's, ooh, okay. Kylie's, I'm gonna give a nine out of 10. Wow. And then. It's over, Jack, it's over. Yeah, no, we're. <laughs> I, I'm very sorry, I'm it's very done. sorry, you two. Andrew, mm, I'm thinking six. Wow. Ooh, wow. And Jack, oh I'm goodness. thinking four. I'm ooh. sorry, I'm I'll, sorry. Second I, place for the answer. I'm sorry. Oh. Looks like I'll my take mom a lied to me. I'll take I'm a sorry, I, I do really like I'll what you did to your shirt. Oh though. yeah, I think TJ's that's the, eyebrow. That's TJ's good. eyebrow adds, you know, an extra <laughs> point too. So, yeah. Um, well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in to our first edition of the Marquette University Television Journal Magazine Show. Make sure to pick up the journal on newsstands next Thursday, November 17th. Have a good Friday. Goodbye. Goodbye. Stand is precise, no margin for error. Dare to forget that. Dare to have fun with it. Get weird with it. Dare to load their minds.